So friends, I'm going to speak to you a few of my thoughts for about seven to eight minutes only. So I hope you enjoy my message. Hi friends, I apologize for not being with you in person. I am very, very happy to be honored to address you today. Especially thanks to Pradeep Bhai, you've always been a guiding force to me and to UPL. Thank you. Today, we are at a time where post-COVID, the world is going through lots of changes, lots of movement. I'd like to share with you a few of my thoughts on what's going on. First, let's talk about food inflation. Today, cost of food has gone up very, very high. And as we are the first contributors to the food chain, we know what the prices are likely to be in the next six months. Food inflation is a big concern. Our industry is a $70 billion industry globally, doing $42 billion worth of international trade. But we help protect and produce more than $3.6 trillion worth of agricultural food commodities, plus fibers is additional. We play an integrated part of global food security and food inflation. When the COVID pandemic started, Indian government, Indian industry realized what was the strength in India and what was the weakness in India. And we should be proud to say that our industry was very, very self-reliant. There were other industries where they found that 90% of their intermediates and inputs came from abroad. And the government has had to spend 10,000 crores with PLI schemes to help them. We should be proud that our industry has a robust ecosystem, great supply chain, and great manufacturing capability. This is all thanks to our great talent, our great scientists, and our great industry leaders. We at UPL are very, very happy to share with you some of our successes. First thing that I'm very, very proud of, under the leadership of my father and mother, UPL has contributed 150 crores to various COVID relief projects in India. Secondly, UPL today ranks number one in organic and natural agriculture. We rank number five globally in agrochemicals. We rank number one globally on the sustainability index, which allows us to get cheaper rate of loans internationally. UPL has set up a University of Sustainable Technologies. UPL has set up a center of excellence on chemical manufacturing and safety. Why have we done this? Today, our country, our industry is often attacked for bogus claims that we are not safe, that we are doing wrong things. We must fight this together through our university and through the center of excellence on safety. We would like to work with you, other industry colleagues, our suppliers, our partners, our customers, all together to take the whole ecosystem of our reputation in terms of safety, our reputation in terms of sustainability and good practices. We will be making graduates from our university, which we hope the industry members will higher, and we will be able to share the good experience that UPL has achieved on its sustainability index globally, as well as other parameters in manufacturing where we have got international and Indian recognition, because we can only grow together. What can we do together? Today, every country is looking at its own national interest and national security. We, as an industry, need to do what is good for India, what is good for Indian farmers, what is good for Indian food security. These are very, very important things for us to do. At UPL, we have put together a group of researchers. These researchers, under the leadership of Ganesan, have been doing amazing work and studying data studying false accusations made by foreign interests and NGOs that are funded from abroad. And some of these booklets are lying in the audience, and I would wish for you all to pick them and take them with you. 
Here we found that India doesn't rank highest in cancer. Here we found that Indian farmers use our products very judicially. India is a country where we recycle plastic. India is a country where we put water in the shampoo bottle and shake it and still use it. And people say, our people are spraying pesticides without any thought. Impossible. We are a very careful society. We are a very green society when it comes to all that we consume. Some highlights and statistics about the strength of Indian agriculture. Today, our Punjab farmers hold the record of highest production compared to anywhere in the world in wheat. Today, where can you have a full meal of fruits and pulses for one dollar? Nowhere else in the world. We are having huge export of grapes and other fruits that are earning fantastic value in the international market. All these things are because of our industry that is helping produce, protect and export our agricultural commodities. Our Honorable Prime Minister wants to double farmer income. We have to keep food inflation in check. Doubling farmer income with keeping food inflation in check can only come from agricultural exports. Global trade of agricultural commodities is more than one and a half trillion. We can take a small share of that and fulfill our Prime Minister's dream of doubling farmer income. Invasive pests, lot of other challenges, climate change, these are making agriculture more difficult, more challenging. And we as an industry, we as a company, are doing an integrated approach of soil health, partnership with various upcoming companies, natural products, organic products, biologicals, and of course, chemicals. In the last few years, our neighboring country, Sri Lanka, tried a very interesting experiment of going 100% organic. Unfortunately, that failed. And enough of media coverage from India and around the world has talked about hyperinflation, food insecurity, planes of food being flown in from neighboring countries to help them. We believe that we as an industry are not the villain. We are not fighting against this or that. We need to do a holistic, integrated agricultural approach. Wrong perception is created that in India, excess pesticides are used. We are one of the lowest consumers of pesticides in the world, but we are the second largest producers of food. During COVID, during the last 20 years, when the world went through up and down, our agricultural partners, our farmers, our industry made sure that India had no food insecurity. This needs to be appreciated and recognized. Let's talk about our global and our Indian chemical industry. The global chemical industry is $5 trillion. Small countries like Switzerland, Singapore are in some cases higher producers and exporters of chemicals than India. India needs to be a strong chemical producer, which will make sure that all the inputs are provided for. When India makes chemicals, they are well respected and accepted in every country in the world from highest regulated countries in Europe to poor countries in Africa that need cost-effective product. India produces quality at a fantastic price point, making sure the world receives it. Our farmers receive it. This whole ecosystem, making India's chemical industry stronger, making sure that we are not reliant on imports for our strong pharmaceutical industry, building on the already existing strength of our agrochemical industry and taking our agrochemical industry from $3.6 billion export last year, which is likely to be $4 billion or $4.1 billion this year to $10 billion in the next few years. Let's all work together for our chemical industry, for our agrochemical industry, for our farmers, for food security of India. Thank you.